أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد Respected brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Previously we examined the migration of the Holy Prophet صلى الله عليه وآله from مكة to مدينة and how he settled first in Quba for about two weeks, then he entered the city of Medina. Now historians generally state that the Prophet ﷺ arrived Medina on a Friday. When he entered uh, Medina from Quba, it was on a Friday. And that Friday, the Prophet offered Salatul Jum'a according to these reports, and he offered a very powerful moving sermon. It was a very, very moving sermon, which was delivered at an area situated in the neighborhood of Bani Salim. Then after that, the first thing that the Prophet did in Medina was to start the construction of the mosque. In Quba, you had a small mosque. That was the first masjid to be constructed in Islam. The second masjid and the more important one was the mosque of Medina. The Prophet realized that in order to, to build a strong community, you need a center, a hub. It acts as a spiritual center where people come and worship. It's an educational center. People come and hear the sermons of the Prophet In fact, the, you know, the Mosque of Medina was a full-time school. Day and night, there were programs in it. Circles, sessions, discussions, speeches during the time of the Prophet It was also a political hub because the important political decisions, announcements, the Prophet would make them in the mosque. It was also a court. Anybody had a dispute, a problem, they would come to the mosque of the Prophet, the Prophet would resolve their disputes. So the Prophet wanted to build a center and that tells us a lot about our religious centers, my brothers and sisters, how important they are in the community. To have a center to go to for spirituality, for education, for a social atmosphere, a positive, healthy social atmosphere. The Prophet created all of that by establishing the mosque. It also was a literary arena. In fact, you had famous poets like Ka'b ibn Zuhair and also Hassan ibn Thabit. They would come to the mosque of the Prophet. They would deliver powerful poems honoring the Prophet, praising the Prophet and the religion of Islam. And the Prophet would welcome that. So imagine the most active place in Arabia was now the mosque of the Prophet, a political center, a social, spiritual center, a political center, even a, a literary poetic center. It served all of these very important purposes. Now the land that the Prophet designated for the masjid, as we stated last week, the Prophet stopped in Medina by the house of Abu Ayyub al-Ansari. That piece of land belonged to Sahl and Suhail, they were orphans, they were under the protection of As'ad ibn Zurara. The Prophet purchased that land from them. He purchased the land according to some reports for 10 dinars. The Prophet paid 10 dinars. Some reports state it was donated, it was gifted, but some reports state the Prophet actually gave them 10 dinars for this land. Now, this land, how big was it when they wanted to start the construction? What was the area of the mosque of the Prophet? One historical account tells us it was mi'at dhira' fi mi'at dhira'. What is the dhira' in Arabic? It's an arm length from the elbow to the fingers. We call this dhira'. This is about 18 inches. So if you do the math, 100 arms length in 100, that's about 20, 22,000 square feet. So we're talking about half an acre. Pretty sizable, right? Half an acre at the time, not bad. Some reports stay, state 70 by 60. So that makes it probably maybe a quarter of an acre. Some scholars have said initially it was a quarter of an acre, then later on it was expanded. As more and more Muslims joined Medina, the expansion now became half an acre. So the Prophet starts 
the construction and he called on the companions to participate in this big honor of constructing the mosque of the Prophet ﷺ. They would get the blocks, the stones from a place called Harra. It had stones, so they would take the rocks and stones from that area. It's not far from you know Medina, so it's within the vicinity of Medina and they would bring it to the mosque of the Prophet to construct. The Prophet, he himself would carry the you know rocks and blocks in order to encourage and motivate the companions. And when you see your own leader working so hard, he's carrying the blocks, that motivates you to also work very hard. So they were working day and night to complete the construction of the mosque. And when they saw the Prophet participating in the construction, they read these beautiful lines of poetry. They would say, لَإِنْ قَعَدْنَا وَالنَّبِيُّ يَعْمَلْ لذاك من العمل المضلل. They say if we sit while the Prophet himself is working, then we are really deviants to do that. So they would encourage themselves to support the Prophet's cause and participate in the construction. And then as they were building the mosque, look at this beautiful scene. Imagine this is early Islam in Medina, the companions with united hearts, they're, they're around the Prophet putting the first building blocks of this amazing mosque of the Prophet. Some of them would recite the following lines, Allahumma inna al-ajra ajru al-akhira, farham al-ansara wal-muhajira. Oh Allah, the real ajr is the ajr of the akhira. That's the real reward. We expect it in the akhira. So have mercy on the ansar, the people of Medina, and the muhajira, meaning the migrants who came from Mecca. So we see this beautiful atmosphere as the Prophet ﷺ was constructing the mosque. Now there's one inter interesting incident that I'd like to conclude with that happened during the construction of the mosque. 